There we go. That's the problem. Oh, oh, now. Goodness me. Okay, that's red hot. That's not good at all. Alright, that, that motor's red hot. Three, 14 years worth of grease. Oh my god. Hi, welcome to my latest video. Today I'm going to be looking at the rear wiper motor. A few times recently my wipers have wiped, got to about there and stopped and not parked back and no amount of waggling the stalk on the steering column has allowed them to sort of get moving again. I've had to actually get out of the car, push the wiper arm to get it to park. What's slightly worrying is when the wiper arm was sat like that, not moving, there was a ticking sound coming from the relay box in the boot, okay? I've actually had to remove the relay. I couldn't see a fuse in the rear fuse box for the rear wiper. I've got a feeling it's in the uh, passenger footwell fuse box. We'll have a look for that in a minute. There's a relay. Pit lane Kitty's out here. She's going to help me take this rear boot panel off and get to that, that wiper motor. I've heard that the wiper motors have a habit of uh, sort of the grease inside dries up, they, they get seized up and they're very expensive to buy genuine ones. They are branded uh, Velio, they're not sort of Land Rover branded. The, the Valio, Valio I think they're called. I'll put a screenshot up now of the uh, uh, Euro car parts page, um, £170. Very expensive, but apparently if you take apart the existing motor and, and just clean it out and re-grease it, they, they, they often are given a new lease of life. So I've turned the car around so that I'm working in the shade at this end. Normally I work uh, in, in the back of the car at the other end, um, but it is absolutely scorching hot blue sky and blazing sun today. It is the, uh, the May end of May, uh, spring bank holiday, and the weather is glorious, okay? So I've um, spent most of the winter complaining that it's too dark, too wet, too cold, and now I'm complaining that it's, it's too hot. But uh, I've got my shorts and t-shirt on, I've got sun cream on, I've got my sunglasses on, and most importantly of all, I've got a cold beer. Um, I've got my tripod, I've got my cheap Wix workmate here to put the motor on when I start stripping it down. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the plan for today, really. Get that wiper motor out, take it apart, see if I can get it working. If I can't, then I'll just have to buy another one. But uh, always better to try and repair something rather than just fork out a load of money for, uh, for a new one. So what I will do, I, I took the relay out because the, the wiper motor is is permanently live okay and and when the wiper was sort of not parked there was a this relay was was ticking okay so so it was trying to move the the wiper arm uh, and failing okay and what was worrying is it was still doing that with the ignition off and the key out and 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 with the, the I'm pretty sure with the car locked as well i mean the wiper motor has a permanent 12 volt feed to it, a permanently live 12 volt feed to allow the wiper arm to park when you, if, if the wiper's running and it's sort of mid sweep and you just turn the engine off and pull the key out, it, it needs to continue to park itself, okay, so it has a permanently live feed. And I have heard of them catching fire, okay, so you'll be really, really careful with this. If, if your wiper motor seized, and, and the arm's sort of out here or it's just not running, don't ignore it. The, the motor can burn out and it can, it can actually cause a fire. I, I've heard of that happening. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear all this junk out of my boot. I'm gonna drink up my beer, put more sun cream on and empty all this out so that I can lift the boot floor, get at that fuse box, put that back in and try to demonstrate the problem to you. Now, what will probably happen is it'll actually work perfectly today, but it's been doing it on and off over the last sort of few weeks, and it just got to the point where I was getting fed up of having to get out and move the arm to get it moving again, so I just took the relay out to isolate it. We'll have a look for the fuse, 
there is a fuse somewhere. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a fuse. It'd be ridiculous if there wasn't a fuse. Okay, um, but that the relay is in the junction box, the relay and fuse box that's sort of in the corner underneath the boot floor. Okay, um, the fuse. It would obviously make sense if the fuse was closer to the battery. Okay, so those cables that feed the wiper probably come up and through the roof of the car through uh, above the headlining and then sort of up one of these kind of ducts here um, and then round to here to the motor okay so the fuse i would expect to be at the other end of the car all right so it's just in case one of these wires uh, did sort of chafe through and shorted out um, it would be a bit silly to bring the power all the way to the boot and then have the fuse the relay can be here it makes sense to actually put the relay probably fairly close to the motor so um, um, but the fuse is somewhere else and we'll try and find that and see right what I'm going to do is try to reproduce the problem now and then I'm going to remove this panel and we'll have a closer look at that motor okay so I've emptied out the boot, I've lifted up the boot floor, taken that out and we can now get at this sort of fuse box, relay box that's in the corner of the spare wheel well. So if I attempt to zoom in a bit on that we can see there RA2, relay 2 is for the rear wiper but there doesn't appear to be a fuse. Okay, I can't see a fuse anywhere there for the rear wiper. Okay, so I'm going to put that relay back in. Let's just put that back in there. Okay, so I pulled that out because I couldn't find the fuse, but I've since found out that the fuse may actually be in the passenger footwell fuse box. Um, I'm, I'm going to have a quick look for that right now, although I'm not going to remove it because I want to actually run the wiper and show you the problem. So let's have a quick look under here. Oh, dearie me. Oh. Okay. It's difficult getting to this. Right, first of all, Let's have a look at the picture on the back. Hopefully that will focus. Come on. Okay. So we've got rain sensor, I think, F1. Various things there, various lights, windows, fog lights, washer, jets, air conditioning, fuel, fuel flap and boot. Uh, fuel pump is probably that rather than the fuel gauge and then we've got that 15 amp f20 okay and that that because it's a square windscreen a square window it as far as I know is the rear okay it's the rear window if we try and find the you see there the shape of that the, the front windscreen is shown as a different shape f1 and f20 so f20 15 amp will be the fuse for the rear wiper. Now that's one, two, three, four, five, six along. Okay, one, one, and a gap, two, three, four, six. Okay, there it is, that blue one there. Where's my finger? Right, it's that one there. F20, 15 amps. So it's it's there. The fuse is good. Don't need to uh, do anything with that at the moment. So what I'm going to do is see if I can run the rear wiper and actually demonstrate the issue. Right. Let's close this down. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to film out the back 
whilst I do this. Okay, let's just zoom it a bit. Right, let's get the ignition on. Right, and now I'm going to try and wash the screen as well, just so it's lubricated a bit. Um, oh, there we go. There you go. That's the problem. Right, you can see it's done it straight away. Okay, so with the stalk here, um, on, off, wash, wash still washes, uh, but the wiper doesn't do anything. Now I'm going to I'm going to turn off the ignition and I'm going to take the key out. All right, the key is out. But this is the issue. So there's the wiper. It should be here. It's wiped and just not come back. And more serious than that is every 30 seconds or so you hear a tick there it is so it sort of ticks on and then off a couple of seconds later and that tick is this relay okay so that's trying to operate the wiper to do the intermittent wipe and it's it's not moving the, the keys out of the ignition I, I'm, I'm even thinking it would do this. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to um, put the camcorder down here and I'm going to lock the car and I want to see if see if I can do that. Right. Now I'll have to review the footage afterwards. I'm going to lock the car, close all doors and windows, close the boot and wait one minute and then I will look back at the footage and see if it's actually ticking with the car locked because that really would be serious then. Okay, so that was about a minute and I could hear it ticking on the outside of the car with the car locked. Okay, so there is a very, very serious fire risk there because the motor's trying to operate with the car locked and nobody with it. Just to demonstrate that the motor is still powered let's just if i just lock again let's just lock the car right and just see if i can come on well now it's sort of gone to there right come on what is it doing usually when I push it a bit, it sort of starts operating. Okay, I mean it's... Ah, that sort of moved a bit under its own steam then. Hmm. It's not good. It's not good. It's all got to come apart. And we've got to see what's going on with this because... Uh, yeah, it, I, I just don't like the way that that's powered up. So I'm going to remove the fuse now. There was a reason why I didn't put the fuse box cover back on. I'm going to pull out the fuse so that there's no power to the motor. Take this off, so there's two screws up in there and up in there. Pull this panel off, you just, you just give it a sharp pull downwards. The whole thing comes down. 
and that will expose the, the motor then. And I'll get the meter out and just make absolutely sure that there is no power being fed to the motor. If there's any doubt about it, I'll just disconnect the battery. But the fuse, as far as I know, is the permanent power to the motor, not the actual sort of signal to do a wipe. Okay, but just because that's a bit of an unknown, it, it might be the the, you know, the, the the wire from the stalk that kind of uh, says to wipe, and, uh, uh, and and the permanent power could be on a different fuse for all I know. So, so just to be safe, I will test that with the meter to make absolute sure <laughs> before I start disconnecting it. Okay, now you probably can't really see that very well because of the bright sunshine, but the panel has been removed. There is the panel. Okay, so it's got these white clips. Now sometimes they can break. I was lucky, all seven of them have survived amazingly. Okay, so sometimes there are also little metal bits up here. These, these little metal um, clip things here can, um, well they don't break, they just come off the car and end up stuck uh, on the plastic or fall down as you remove the boot panel. So that's all good. What I'm going to do now is have a look now. The sun is so bright, this is going to be very difficult. Okay, I'm going to be fighting the exposure the whole time I think with this video. Here is the motor, okay. There is a plug there, okay, which has got three wires. So that's probably ground. If I just try and zoom that a bit. There we go. You've probably got ground uh, pulsed live to sort of trigger a wipe and then a permanent live to allow the motor to park. That's that's as I would imagine it to be wired. Uh, might be completely wrong there. Uh, it could ground through the... You see there's a ground point here with a, with a big earth cable on it, but it's... All the mountings are plastic. There's, there's nothing actually connecting onto these these uh, legs here, which are obviously metal uh, into metal, but all of these arms here are plastic. Okay, so, oh, oh, now, goodness me. Okay, that's red hot. That's not good at all. All right, that, that motor's red hot. If you wanted any kind of confirmation that this is a fire risk, there you go, that motor's hot, all right, and, and the key is out of the ignition, but I'm not even wiping, okay, not, not, not I don't, I don't know if this is, oh, that's hot as well, I mean, this could possibly just be hot from the hot sun, but this was, I mean, that metal there's cold, okay, so no, that, that's, that's not the hot sun, no way, ouch, that is, the, right, I, I need to get this, uh, I need to get this disconnected urgently. Get that fuse out. Let's see if we can pull this out. Oh, bury me. Right, okay. I've disconnected that. Okay, because that is trying to run, and, and that is hot, and if, if I don't do something, this is gonna, this, this will end up catching fire. So, yeah, serious, serious problem. Okay, really, really not something that should be ignored if your rear wiper acts up in any way at all. Do investigate it because uh, yeah if that if that overheats then it'll set fire to the plastic paneling and that's it the car's gone right okay what I'm gonna do is just get the meter oh no look you see this connector what is that is that oil or is that it looked it looked sort of burnt but I don't think it is I think it was just just some oily grease okay 
Right. I, I'm. Th there's no question that there's a permanent feed to this. Okay. I, I will try to stick the meter into here to find out which of these wires. I know I could look at the wiring diagrams, but uh, if I just, uh, it should be pretty easy with these three connections here to work out which is which. Um, but but that is still actually trying to run. Um, so one of these should be permanently live. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just using the meter in this plug here. So I've got my, my voltmeter here. And what I've realized is that, hopefully you can see that, the black wire here at the top is ground. Okay, so that's got zero ohms between that and a chassis earth. The middle wire, yellow and purple, that one is permanent 12 volts. And then this one here, which is green and purple, pulses 12 volts and then goes to ground. So it goes 12 volts and then actually grounded zero volts. At first, I thought that was the ground connection because I was measuring between there and chassis and I was getting a uh, short circuit. Um, but, but then every sort of 30 seconds, that goes to 12 volts, okay? So that is the pulse to trigger the wipe and then the permanent 12 volts actually sort of allows it to then park the wiper arm, okay? Um, and, and, and that way if you sort of turn off the ignition and this one goes, goes, goes off uh, because the key's out, then this allows the wiper to still park, not be left sort of halfway through its travel. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to stick See if I can get that into there. It's, I'm gonna to have to stop filming, but I'm gonna test on that middle live one and take out the fuse and just make sure that goes dead. And, and the same goes for this one here, actually. Um, but that one does tend to go dead once the, the key is out of the ignition, okay? Um, it, it's the middle one, really, that is the cause of concern because that's the one that's keeping that motor uh, energized and, and causing it to overheat. Okay, so I'm going to test that middle one, make sure that that is actually on the fuse, not just the, the green and purple. Okay, so I'm going to pull the fuse out. There it is. Blue 15 amp F20. Okay, I'll just put that there for now. And what we should find now, hopefully, is yes okay so that that's stuck in that middle pin and we've got measuring basically between the chassis and that yellow purple that was giving 12 volts it's now zero what i'd like to do is test the other pin the green purple and just make sure that that's dead as well i don't really want to do anything with this until it's all completely isolated Okay, so I've just put the ignition on and I've actually put the wiper stalk to wipe. The relay's not ticking anymore and both of these yellow and purple and green and purple are completely dead. Okay, so the fuse controls both. Uh, it, it even controls the, the timing and everything because the relay's not clicking anymore. Okay, so the whole thing is completely off. I'm going to now undo these three nuts and get that motor off and start taking it apart. Right, so I was just about to undo these and I've just thought of something. The, uh, the shaft goes through the glass, so I can't remove the motor until this is off, but I don't know how that actually is removed. Does it just pull? Ah, hang on. Right, okay, there we go, all right, yeah. So that, that little bit hinges up. Okay, and then there's a nut there, which is probably sort of 14 mil, 15 mil, something like that. Right, okay, I'll remove that first, then undo the, uh, the nuts inside. Okay, so it's a 13 millimeter socket. <laughs> Okay, 
hoping that that just falls off now. Okay, so that just pulls away in the end, it's just a spline shaft on there and uh, that just sits onto that. You've just got to get that right and just pull it away. Tiny rubber sleeve thing there plastic sleeve which I've just retrieved because when I pull that shaft back through that's going to probably fall on the floor and get lost. Right, let's have a look at this. Right, 10 millimeter socket for these. So I'm just being a bit careful here because that's coming loose now. When I take this one out, there's a high chance that might just drop. Okay, yes it is, it's starting to fall. Let's keep hold of it. Now, interestingly, these nuts are, are sort of like stuck to the washers. They're kind of like very, very flanged nuts, really. Like washers and nuts kind of almost welded together. So, Right there. Uh, let's just see if this. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Right, let's just try and get this uh, zoomed out a bit. Okay. Right, there is the wiper motor. Motor, gearbox, kind of crank mechanism there that. Uh, does something to make that kind of wipe and back, wipe and back. I mean, it from the outside looks brand new. So that is Land Rover branded, but it's also Valio. Okay, so Valio are the company that make the original equipment, um, and it's got the Land Rover badge on. So if you buy a Valio, you are effectively getting a genuine factory part. Okay, uh, and the ones sold by Euro Car Parts are Valio. Let's just see, there's no Land Rover part number. I don't know what if this 1458 is in there, but the, the part number's there. I will just try and sort of zoom on that um, and try and take a, a kind of a still. just in case some of these numbers mean anything. I mean, it says 12 volts on it. That's kind of important. As for the other numbers, who knows? They might be just like, you know, serial numbers, date stamps, I don't know. But I wouldn't recommend buying a cheap, cheap replacement. There are quite a lot of cheapy sort of Chinese ones on eBay and that, and uh, from what I've heard, they don't last very long. Okay, so you can get these cheap, non-genuine replacements for a, about £40 I've seen, but I've also heard that they just fail within within 18 months or so. It's not worth it. Not worth doing it. Get, get the proper item or fix the original, which is what we're going to try and do in this video. Okay, so I'm going to put this now on the bench as such and the workmate and I'm going to start taking it apart there's quite a lot of little Torx screws here and there's a couple of big crosshead screws there so I shall attack that with a screwdriver and just see what's inside my usual 
talked bits here, the, the standard sort of non-security ones, the ones without the hole in the middle, go down to a T15. That's too big. But luckily, on the security side, it goes down to a T10. A T10H. H for hole, I'm guessing. And that does fit. So it's a T10 Hawks. I'm hoping I don't actually need to remove the motor because from what I've heard it isn't the motor that burns out it, it just gets stiff because of the grease that's underneath this metal cover so re-greasing you don't actually put any inside the motor okay the motor is is sort of dry um, that doesn't actually really need anything to it doing to it. So right, here we go, all the screws are out. There's a couple of a couple of like kind of like black things there, but I don't know if they're gonna stop this coming coming away. Right, it doesn't want to move. I think it might need persuading a flat blade screwdriver. Ready. This has not been opened for oh, 14 years. It's an 09 plate car and it's now 2023. 14 years worth of grease. Ugh. Oh my god. What is this mess? Well, okay, not only is it bone dry in here, but it's really rusty. No wonder it's having trouble. This is just in a just in a real mess. Okay, so we've got no grease left. Well, very, very dry grease on the worm drive. The teeth on the large plastic cog don't look too bad. There's none missing that I can see, although Yeah, I mean, they're, they're not exactly sharp, but they look the same all the way round. Okay, um, it's this arm that is the, the bad bit, that is completely rusty um, and, and dry. There's, there's, there's a little blob of grease here, um, not doing anything, and that's it. And oh, there's a bit on in the middle of the cog. Not really very useful there. Okay, I need to get this. Oh, it's just rusty dust falling out of it. Okay, I need to try and get this apart. Ah, oh, look, there we go. Actually, if you just push that, push that, the whole thing. Be very careful not to break any of the plastic bits here. Come on. Right, that is going down. The whole thing. There we go. Come on. Right. Okay. Now this is very interesting. The large yellow cog actually has electrical contacts on it. And there's a whole load of contacts here. So that does the kind of auto parking um, and possibly uh, is what sort of tells the motor to... Uh, now let's see, uh, the motor doesn't reverse, the motor always goes the same way. This is a kind of crank here, so that just... Oh, that is so stiff. That, that is really stiff. No wonder it's jamming up. Right, that's... 
really, really difficult to move. Okay, that's why it wasn't working very well, and also why the motor was getting so hot. So the, the electrical contacts here, they've they've got sort of green grease on them. I don't know if that's grease that's actually meant to be green, or whether it's green because of copper oxide. But yeah, it's all in a bit of a state. Right, so what I'm going to do is get a cloth, clean this up. I'm going to get a brake cleaner actually, I think, just to degrease this because there's sort of blobs of rusty dry grease in here. The whole thing needs a real good clean. And then a regrease. Now what's worrying here is some of these tracks, they, they looked as if they had brakes in them, that one there, but that's, I don't think it's a brake, it's actually just some of that uh, green slimy grease has got on the tracks, which um, could well have stopped the electrical connection and caused the, the wiper arm to just stop. Okay, right, let's get a cloth, get this cleaned up and then we'll have a closer look at it. Uh, I highly recommend these, available from most DIY shops. I've got a cloth here, but I'm going to wipe with these first. These are sort of like degreasing wet wipe things. Really, really good. I remove glue, paint, grease, oil, everything. Okay, so let's attack this first. Oh, blimey. I, th I thought that just had little copper tracks on it. It's actually a massive, great copper disc almost. It's so covered in grime, I couldn't see it. Right, I've got the wire brush out here. I'm going to try and give this a bit of a clean up. It's kind of moving, but not very well. I'll get some of this flaky rust off it. And then I'll re grease it. Something just flew out. I think it was something either in this hole or this hole. It came out and it went in my toolbox. Uh, okay. Have to examine the footage and see what it was. I think it did end up in my box of tools, so I'll have an image in there and see if I can find something. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
give this a bit of brushing. I think this is almost like water's got in here. A lot of rust. It's entirely possible that water has leaked down the, the spindle of the wiper arm, got into the gearbox here, and get them to rust up. The rust dust will then dry the grease up. The whole thing seizes. Right, okay. Ah, right, I've just found the thing that flew off into my toolbox. It was this, but where that goes, I don't know. Is it on there? I think it was on there. Unless it was in, no, it wasn't in there. No, the only possible place it could go, yeah, you can actually see a little outline there. Okay, so that's something to be aware of. Cap, plastic cap that can fly off. Right, let's have a quick go at putting this back together. I'm not going to wire brush any of this in here because I don't want to risk um, damaging these little contacts here. Uh, they're nice and shiny. So that has all escaped the rust. So I'll put a bit of WD-40 on that lot. Um, I will grease, let's see. There's some grease in there for that shaft. Grease probably on here for the cog to sit on. And then loads of grease in this mechanism here. I'm going to put WD-40 on first just to kind of get in there, penetrate in, and then the grease can work its way in after that. Yeah, that's still really, really stiff. That's freeing up already. Come on. Right, come on. I've just got to kind of look, work that back and forth. kind of hoping that once this gets reassembled with fresh grease and starts to be run it will it will lubricate itself and kind of get, get moving nicely right that's freeing up quite well it's still a bit too stiff for my liking but it's uh, yeah, it's at the ends of its travel that it really struggles. Oh, come on. <sighs> Needs more ball. working that back and forth. Right, 
Okay, that's moving quite well now. That's good enough to reassemble. So, let's get some grease going. I've only got this grease, which is CV grease, but it's uh, it's high temperature grease, it's good enough. Um, so I'm going to stick, let's put a bit of that on there. And there. Now, what we need here, we need probably a little bit of it, not too much, but a little bit around here, just where those sliding contacts work on the copper, um, and then loads of it around here. This is the part which seizes up. It's not the motor, the contacts, or anything else. I'm also going to put some around the, uh, the teeth on the main cog and on the worm drive as well. Right, time to put it back together. Let's spin that as it goes down in. There we go. And that then has a little cap that goes on there. Right, that's still not down properly. There we go. Just sort of pull that through. Okay. Just going to put a bit more on that sort of. intended to do where that central sort of the, the crank pivot arm bit works on the the yellow cog right let's stick that back on that's just a plastic cap to protect it against the metal cover oh dear, I've got too much grease on the go here yeah. That's it, that's enough grease. If that doesn't work, it will be new motor time. <coughs> now I would like to try to run this somehow. Let's see if it's possible to run that like that, but the problem is if I try and run that, that cog is gonna come out. Um, I will have to just put this back together. Just double check, I've put everything back in. Yep, okay. What I'm going to do is connect it up to the plug, run the rear wiper and make sure that the shaft kind of spins you know, one way and then the other and then just run that for a little bit of time just to get all that grease to work its way into the mechanism. Oh, look, there's one screw missing. Right, let's 
give it one final clean up on the outside. Now that the grease is all sealed up inside under the cover, I can actually give this a bit of a, a bit of a white. Now, I don't think the motor needs any lubrication. I didn't actually take the motor off. The problem is that I don't think it will come away with that worm drive in, on, on the... Um, yeah. Okay. Um, if you do this and you re-grease and it still doesn't work, it could well be the motor. Now there are two screws here, you could take that part, take that motor off and clean it up. I don't think there's anything wrong with this motor. It's a kind of a sealed unit that that runs and was, was trying to run and it was getting hot because the mechanism was, was seized up. So now that the mechanism's got lots of grease on it and it's nice and, well, a, a, moving a lot freer than it was before. I think that motor will be absolutely fine. So let's connect this and turn on the wipers and see what happens. Now, I don't know if you can see this because of the bright sky, but the motor is there. I've literally just got it on the connector. Okay, so it's just it's just suspended on the, on the wiring. It's fine, and it? it shouldn't really do that, but it's three chunky cables there. It's clipped in, it's just gonna, sit there like that while I just run it and see if it turns. Okay, right, ignition on, rear wiper stalk on, ah, oh, the fuse. I haven't put the fuse back in, have I? Right, so I do need to remember to put the fuse back in and then I will turn the ignition on and operate the rear wipers rear wiper via the stalk there it is. right that's back in okay right let's put the in ignition on right that's oh the motors it's moving around which is a good sign I'm just gonna halt that oh there we go right now can you see this can you see it just watch that shaft at the end there we go and it's turning one way and then the other it sounds so much better Yeah, that relay's clicking and that's turning. So uh, yeah, that's that's really good. That it just feels feels much happier. The motor is spinning nice and fast, and it's not kind of struggling at all. Right. Okay. What I'll do? Turn off the uh, the rear wipe. I'm going to get that fitted back in there now. What's going on here? Sorry, it wasn't lining up. It wasn't lining up. I had to get it through the glass. And in position right. I'm going to put those bolts, uh, put, put the nuts on these studs, and then put the wiper arm back on, and then we'll run it properly, see if it cleans the glass. Okay, so nuts back on here, tightened up, motor's in position. Let's close that. And then I need to put that little sleeve, there was a little 
plastic sleeve thing which kind of goes in. Let's get the arm. Now I'm hoping that the wiper is in its park position. I was kind of running it and then I turned it off. And, but it should have parked even if it was mid-wipe. Right, this is fiddly. I, think I just need to get the nut on there. That's that's you can see there where it used to come to. So we'll just get it there. Get that nut on and tighten it down. Now, oddly, this nut doesn't have a washer or anything. It's literally kind of straight onto the metal. Possibly be a bit low, but well, let's run it and see. You can always move it one spline. Right, let's give, let's run this and um, actually do do a bit of a wash wipe. Right, okay. So let's film out the back. Yeah, that's going too low. It's too low. It needs to be moved one spline. Okay. Right, that's parking too low and it's not coming. To, it should be 180 degrees and it is, but it's too low here and too high here. So I'm just going to loosen that, move that one spline. Right. I think that's in the right place now. Come on. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's in line with this heater wire here. Okay, so if I do that. Okay, it comes slightly below this one, but the important thing is that when it parks, it's horizontal. So that can go down on that. There we go. Right, so that's all working well. I now need to refit the boot liner cover. Job done, right, good. That was an interesting project, interesting video. Um, hope that helps. If your wiper at the back is seized up or not wiping properly or not parking properly, do not ignore it. It can overheat and set fire to your car. Fairly easy to remove it, clean it out, regrease it. Save myself 170 quid now. Don't need to go and buy a brand new one. And that one now, I'm hoping it's good for another 14 years. Okay, well I hope that video was useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye.